Welcome my video friends to Through the Bible with Brother David. Appreciate you being with us today. And we'll pick back up in Exodus chapter 20. We're down in verse uh, verses 9 through uh, 11 about uh, the Lord's the Lord's day, the Sabbath. And we were discussing when we left last one about um, the New Testament and uh, the dispensation of grace and the dispensation of the law. How that uh, we, we do this differently under the dispensation of grace versus that of the law. And there are differences, of course, in that. But we were in particular uh, looking at the uh, uh, this matter of the of keeping the Sabbath day unto the Lord. Now I've heard people say, well, uh, they refer to Sunday as the Sabbath. That's not exactly correct. Sunday is not the Sabbath, which is the seventh day of the week, which is Saturday. And so don't get that confused. And then uh, uh, people get a lot of confused about what they can do on Sunday and what they can't do on Sunday. And when you read the New Testament and the ministry of Jesus Christ, I think you'll find the uh, uh, the correct interpretation of that given by Jesus Christ. Uh, he, he gave the illustration of the ox in the ditch on, on the seventh day. And, uh, and I think we can learn a lot from that. If it's something we absolutely need to do, I don't think there's no wrong at all in doing it. And... Uh, and like I said just in the last video, I don't think we sin if we work on Sunday. I don't think we sin if we go out to buy something on Sunday. But I will say this, I don't think that we should practice that any more than what we have to. I think we ought to observe this simply because of the precept and the example that it is unto us. That it's better for your body to rest one day a week that it is to keep going seven days a week. Uh, I've worked a lot of people in my career as a builder. And I've had these guys that uh, I'll say, well, we're going to work Sunday too. And uh, most of the time I tell them, no, don't, don't work Sunday on my jobs. We don't work Sunday. Uh, but I've known guys who have worked uh, uh, on Sunday. And without fail, without fail, they won't make it through the next week. They will miss a day the following week because they will give out. They are nothing ahead by working on the Lord's day. And let me say this to all the business people uh, who got all these stores opened up on the Lord's day. You're spinning your wheels and going nowhere with that. Uh, uh, you, uh, there are businesses. Uh, I know of two big businesses. They're not open on Sunday, and they're doing very well, as a matter of fact. Very well. And so if you got the idea you have to be open on Sunday, uh, look around you. You don't have to be open on Sunday. Uh, think about the banks. Uh, when have you heard of a bank going broke because they were not open on Sunday? I uh, hadn't heard about that. And uh, maybe some open on Sundays. I'm, I don't know for sure. But for the most part, they're closed. And so keep that in mind, my friends. Uh, you can make it without... Uh, working on Sunday. I know some of you may be forced to work on Sundays or part-time on Sundays, and I understand that. And if, if you're in that situation, uh, uh, I, I, I feel bad for you. Uh, but uh, remember, uh, I don't think it's sin. I don't believe the Bible teaches it's just sin in doing that. And uh, I just make a practice myself. If I don't have to have it on Sunday, I don't get it. I don't do any work on Sunday unless I absolutely have to do something on Sunday. I do very, very little, if any, work on any given Sunday because it's the Lord's day. And it's a day of rest and a day when we lay, lay aside all the work that we would normally do and rest. I know the dairy farmers, they got to go milk the cows on Sunday. And I understand we had some cows and horses when I grew up. And we go down to feed them on Sunday and throw out some hay to them. And I, I think that, yes, there are some things necessary to be done on Sunday. I appreciate the law enforcement people who work Sundays. I appreciate the rescue people and the paramedics who serve and work on Sundays. 
uh, I, I certainly understand this. I don't think that it's sin for them to do that at all. And uh, I, I know people have uh, various ways of trying to respect the Lord's day. And I think the Lord has set that example for us. And if the ox is in the ditch, I'm going to pull him out. But if he's not in the ditch, I just let him wait till Monday. And so uh, we, can, we can take heed to that. Now I know some preachers, and I don't agree with them, and they teach and preach that sin if you work or shop on Sunday. I don't think we ought to practice that, but I don't think it's sin. I, I think we ought to just keep that in mind. It's not sin. And if our heart's in the right place, we want to please the Lord, and we want to use the example that he's given us about uh, Sunday worship and also Sunday work and Sunday commerce. And then... Uh, Let's move on to the next one. We could stay on that one a long time because you get a lot of different opinions about that. And I know this. You go to Israel, they close the stores down and the computer, uh, 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 the, uh, the web service. They, uh, they close that all down, I think, on Friday about 6 o'clock until Saturday about 6 o'clock and open it back up. Well, uh, that's their way of doing it over there. They are thinking they're a seal under the law. But we who know the Bible, we're not under the law. We should know that. Let's move on to verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Here we find another great commandment given about honoring our mothers and our fathers. This is the first commandment given with promise, we're told. And the promise is that it may be well with thee, that thy days may be long upon the earth which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, uh, you say, what does, that, what does all that mean? Well, again, now we're not under the law. We're not going to keep this and get to heaven with this. Uh, but you're much ahead in life, and you can be much blessed in life. If, if we observe this, uh, given to us as an example and given to us as a precept uh, to honor your mother and father. It's the right thing to do. And uh, we ought to always honor our mother and father. Even if they're dead and gone, we should still honor them. We can honor them with our words of respect unto them, even if they've already passed away. And uh, if you're still children, uh, you could uh, definitely honor your mother and father by obeying them. We're taught in the new scripture, children, obey your parents. Uh, no question about that. Uh, and when we have a direct commandment about that in the New Testament uh, given to us, so we ought to definitely teach our children to obey. And in our day and age, I'm telling you, there's a lot of parents are plumb stupid about the matter. And they don't make their kids obey nothing. Uh, they just hope for the best, I guess. I uh, know you ought to uh, see to it that they obey you. And I think you're displeasing God and hurting your children if you don't make them and teach them to obey you. I know you can be abusive physically, and you can also be abusive in your rules and regulations. And being a dictator, I realize that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we can teach our children to obey. And we can teach them this commandment here to honor thy father and thy mother. It's a great blessing when you do that. If your mom and dad's still alive, go see them if you possibly can from time to time. And if you can, give them a telephone call uh, from time to time to honor your mother and to honor your father. And you can honor them that way. And uh, I've tr tried to make a point. My dad's been gone now, I think about eight years. Uh, but from many, many years ago, uh, al almost 40 years, uh, when it was his birthday, he didn't live close to me. He lived way across the country. Uh, I would I'd make a point to send him uh, a small uh, gift for his birthday. I'd try to make a point to send him a small gift for Father's Day and then for Christmas. Three times a year, I'd try to make a point. Uh, to send something like that to my dad to honor him. It wasn't much that I sent. I know it wasn't much. I mean, he, he wasn't broke. He was doing all right in life. 
I would send them a small gift uh, each each time, those three times a year. And there's many other ways that you can honor your father too. And your mother, I tried to go visit my mother when I could. She lived about three, more than three hours away from where I lived. So it wasn't like she was next door. I couldn't drop in uh, every day to visit with her. But I tried to make a point. I made many, many trips by to see my mother and my grandparents when they were alive and though I lived away. And, uh, and the Bible says that it may be well with thee, that thy days may be long upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, I can't explain this exactly. Uh, I do know that we're not under this law, uh, but we do have the commandment given to us in the New Testament uh, to obey and to honor our parents. Um, but now the, the promise that's mentioned here with it, uh, that may be well with thee. I can certainly see that. Uh, uh, you know when things are well with thee, and you know when they're not. Uh, that may mean that you get a good job versus not having one. That may be that you've married the right person versus not marrying the right person. If you haven't obeyed your father and your mother, and they've warned you against marrying that person, and you go ahead and marry that person, and you reap from it, well, it's not well with thee. It's not well with thee. Then there's a promise of long life given to those who honor their mother and father. And I know it's hard to honor some parents. Some parents are not really worthy of a whole lot of honor. Uh, but you can always honor them just simply because they are who they are, your mom and your dad. And so uh, you can always keep that in mind. And you can add to your days They're upon the earth by doing that. Now, I don't know how long that our days are meant to be upon the earth. Uh, I don't know. There's, uh, people, I've heard some people say, well, I know so-and-so honor their mom and dad. They ain't lived to be but 30. Uh, hold on there a minute. How old were they supposed to live to start with, you might ask. It may be that the Lord had 20 years determined for them. And it may be that they honored their mom and dad and he gave them 30 years instead. Uh, we ought to think about it uh, from that viewpoint because we don't know how long uh, that any of us have life for. Uh, no man knows that. We, we don't know. The Bible says the point unto man wants to die. We don't know when that appointed day is, my friends. That may be the day you're 20. That might be the day you're 100. Uh, we don't know that. I do believe the Bible. I believe the promises of the Bible. And, uh, and that uh, if you honor your mom and your mother and your father, that your days can be long upon the earth or longer than what they would have been for sure. It might be instead of you dying at 50, you might live to be 60 or you might live to be 70. It might be instead of you dying when you're 70, you might live to be 80. It might be, instead of you dying as a teenager, that you might live to be 25. So uh, keep that in mind, my friends. And remember, the promises of God, they're connected to this commandment. And, uh, and your life will be blessed, much more blessed if you try to honor your mom, mother and father than if you try to go against them. And so uh, you uh, keep that in mind. And you, you're going to bring woe upon yourself if you dishonor your father and your mother. And you, you have to get the curse of God upon you. It may not be well with you. It may not be well with your children if you do that. You may have troubles you will not have had normally as you uh, obeyed your mother and your father. Mm -hmm.